Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, something that I've been asked in the past before. How cheap can you build a Aspen or Volari? Are they cheap? There's a lot of people that aren't familiar with these cars. And I've been asked this. So I figured it's time to answer it. So, where would I start? For the... For the times with gas prices and everything going up and everything I won't go any any politics because I believe cars and politics should be divided and this is not a political channel so at the end of the day not all of us have extreme amounts of budgets we don't have thirty thousand forty thousand dollars drop on a car that's everyday working guy that's realistic you want something you can take the family in. You want something you can take out on Friday, Saturday nights, get ice cream, go to a car show. Do whatever you want to do. Get on it when you can and have some fun. Because that's usually what the classic car hobby is all about. It's just having fun. And so these, in my opinion, are a great introductory car for someone on a budget. You can still find them relatively cheap. Where I would start if I was a younger guy, younger you know, person with a family, in my opinion, if I was getting into these, I would look for a 1978 to 1980 model. So 78, 79, 80 model. Um, Aspen Valari does not matter. But I would look for a Slant 6 model. One of the main things you're going to look for on these is rust. These cars are known for rust. That's why a lot of the older generation does not like them. That's fine with me. I can fix rust. But for somebody starting out, you might not have all the metalworking stuff you need. You might not have a welder, a uh, tram bar, all that stuff you would need to fix serious rust. So getting past that, you could find a lot of Slant 6 base bottles, cream puffs as I like to call them, relatively cheap. No one really gets too excited about a 14 inch wheel with hubcaps and a slant six. There's some guys out there that might. I'm not one of them guys. So, um, perfect example of this is this car, my 1980 Aspen RT clone. I picked this car up um, about 35 minutes from my house for a few hundred dollars. It had a blown up slant six in it. The guy that had it went as far as pulling the motor and transmission out and that was as far as he got on the project. He did go find some parts for it. He did find a 355 sure grip rear end and he did buy the Schumacher motor mounts, which for those that don't know, Schumacher is back in business as of this moment and they are working on getting the motor mounts back out there. From what I heard, they are starting with headers first and then working their way to the motor mounts. Um, that's going to change week to week, but just so you guys know, that product is back out there. That will save you time hunting down a V8 K-frame or modifying your Slant 6 K-frame. So, but anyway, back to the spiel. So, pick this one up for a few hundred bucks. It was that cream puff. I had 14-inch wheels, hubcaps, bench seat, nothing to write home about or be excited about. So, where do you start? So. You can either decide to hop a slant six, which is what some guys do. It's unique, it's cool, I give it credit. It was not the path I needed to go with this project because it didn't have a slant six and I didn't wasn't gonna find another one to put back in it. So a lot of a lot of things that people do nowadays, you can find a 318 out of a truck, or a, th or a lot of guys do magnum swaps. Magnums are a more expensive swap, the parts are more expensive, the intakes are horribly horribly expensive and they're double triple the cost of what a la intake would cost so my low buck solution for this which going along with the roadkill theme i actually built this car before i started watching roadkill so i really can't say i copied them but i pulled the 360 in this car it was originally out of an rv low compression it was a 1977 block so nothing to get excited about or write home about, but I had a little out of low end torque. So um, great platform to start with. So 
It had low mileage, ran great. It was actually swapped into a pickup truck that my body buddy got in to cut up and part out. So I went over there, gave him a few hundred bucks and helped him pull it, brought my motor home. So you can do that kind of stuff if you get, you know, whether it's 318 or a 360, um, the, you know, it's, in my opinion, if you compare the two cost savings between building a 360 and a 318, there's not really much or any of a difference. I think the 318 converters are, are a little bit cheaper for the torque converter, but not enough to make a difference per se if you're looking at this as, you know, a paycheck to paycheck build. So now I'm at my 360, I got that. And originally what I went and did was I found a buddy that he deals in parts and yada yada. I bought a 904 with lockup. I do not recommend that. Um, the lockup converters are more expensive than the regular non-lockup converters. So I had about $200 I think into a brand new lockup converter which didn't have that much high of a stall. Um, so for some people, they, you know, you can compare gas mileage and stuff if you want to, but I really didn't see much between the lockup and the non-lockup 904 that I bought. So that lockup 904 ended up, it lasted me my first summer that I built the car and I burned it up doing burnouts because that's what this car is built for. It's built to do dumb things. I like to do dumb things with it. And anybody you ask that knows me and knows this car will confirm that 110%. So you got your motor, you got your transmission, drive shaft. Um, what I did was, was I got lucky. I had another eight and a quarter car, 904 in my parts inventory. So I got the drive shaft from that. Um, drive shafts are not really too hard to find. You just gotta reach out to the right people or find them or have them in your junkyard. So moving on to the rear end. Originally the slant six cars usually have a seven and a quarter. Seven and a quarters are not known to last. They don't really hold up to any form of power. So I don't want to shatter that. Luckily, like I said, the guy that I bought the car from, he sourced the eight and a quarter with a 355 sure grip. I swapped that, I think, first week I had the car. Just a set of U-bolts. Um, another way to cut costs down, um, which you kind of break even on, but the, the rear shocks for these cars um, they have what's called a, um, what do you call it? They're not a common, common shock. So they have, they're the, um, leaf spring mount and everything has a giant piece of rubber that encases the top and bottom. It's supposed to give you a more cushy ride. Um, but the shocks are more expensive and they're, you don't have that much of a selection. So what I do is... I get shock plates from either a B body or a C body, which are the same shock plates. You can usually find them used for 50 to 80, 100 bucks, somewhere around there. That opens up your shock choices tremendously. You can get coilovers, air shocks, just so much that you can put on these. Um, so that's what I did. I put the eight and a quarter, I put the B, B body shock plates on there. The B body shock plates that I got are from, I think the, this set was from a 68 charger picked them up for I think 50 60 bucks it was cheap so you get the shocks are also cheaper for those cars because they're more widespread they're more there's more of them being made than just the F body M body shocks so and in doing that B body conversion it also does raise the rear of the car an inch for free pretty much because you're saving money on shocks so moving on um, going into further cost analysis so you got a few hundred bucks into your motor, you're gonna have your transmission, whether you get it used or have it built. Now, don't be afraid of picking up a core transmission. Most three-speed builders, if, unless you're going with some huge company, my local guy will build a 727 or a 904 for 250 to $300. Get a newly rebuilt transmission, and then the torque converter for you know a stock high stall for a Chrysler, usually is about 100 to $120, plus the core. So. 
relatively cheap when you're talking about a transmission build that's brand new. You can get lucky at swap meets and pick up a used one and hope that it lasts like I did that first summer and well that's how lucky I got. You might have better luck than I did. But so we got our motor, we got our transmission, we got our rear end. We have a pretty nice build right off the bat for even with the new transmission and everything we're still under a thousand dollars. So now we can we have our car that's pretty much a drivable candidate. So once you start breaking down um, cooling systems, let's talk that. What I did is I bought a parts store radiator from Advance Auto. A lot of you don't know, but Advance Auto has great aftermarket radiators compared to like AutoZone or O'Reilly's or a lot of those other places. I don't know why Advance is better, but every time I seem to order them, they're cheaper and they fit better. This one, the bottom mounts bolted right up to everything with the 22 inch um, radiator support, which is what Slant 6 cars had, the 360 cars had a 26 inch. But the only thing that was goofy was the top mounts, the mounts for, on the radiator were too high and wouldn't, they wouldn't go in the holes. So I had to drill new holes, not a huge deal. So I think that radiator, it's a, just a two core plastic aluminum I think I had like 110 bucks into it. That's fairly cheap. And then I did, uh, I reused the hoses off the truck. It was for the top and bottom. So I saved costs on that. You can't replace those. That'd probably be another 40, 45 bucks if you want to do that. And then I did put a new um, Melling water pump on it just because it was out and it was easy to do. So, um, and I did put a new double roller timing chain on it just because again, the motor was out and, and makes sense to do it when it's easy to get to so yeah now you have new new cooling system for a couple hundred bucks and I did go through and do the Mopar ignition conversion which since this car was a lean burn car um, basically what the Mopar standalone system does it's a kit you order it's a distributor an orange ignition box and a ballast and it has the, the four or five wire wiring harness, which is super easy to wire up. I'll do a segment on that. I have to convert the um, Dodge Aspen Richard Petty Edition over to that because somebody put a melling kit in it that I don't really care for. So, yeah. Convert it over to that. I think the distributor kits are roughly, it depends on what kit you get. You can get the cheap Amazon ones, which I haven't had any experience with. I normally order the JEGS kit, which I think is like 150 bucks. Then you have a, your ignition system is four wires, which really simplifies things at the end of the day. Your car breaks down, you can jump the ballast and get the car running. So I like simplicity. I don't like a lot of wires that aren't needed to do a lot of things. So and I did put a new alternator in it just for peace of mind. And that was a $90 reman from O'Reilly's. So now we have a new cooling system, new charging system. So you have a you know, you're confident that you can stay cool and charge with your new hot rod project. So, if you're still, we're at the point now with wheels. Some guys might choose to stay with the 14 inch steelies, pop the hubcaps off, run it like that. 14 inch tire availability at the moment, I don't see it getting much better because not a lot of people run 14s anymore because 14s are small, unfortunately. It's not 1980. We don't have 14 inch Kregers running around on every hot rod anymore. Most people have 15s. So, and a 14 by six Steely is not too exciting in my opinion. So, what I did is I took these old aluminum wheels. I have a, they're a 14 by six front and a 15 by 10 rear. I bought those, the the two fronts I got off my dad's uh, old duster, and so those ones I didn't have any money into, and then the rears I had, I bought four 15 by 10s with tires for $200. So you could shop around, tires, you know, wheels are controversy, but if you, you can get lucky and find a good deal on Kregers, Keystones, or something like that for under 500 bucks, usually with tires. That'll be one of the more expensive parts. Now. 
I'm a big fan of the Cooper Cobra Cobras because my tire guy is a Cooper dealer. Um, a lot of guys like those BFGs, the radial TAs, I think they're called. Um, the quality of those have gone down in recent years. There is a huge problem with sidewalls and the letters on those turning brown. It's a, it's somehow how the tires are made, it's an issue. So you're gonna be scrubbing your tires all the time or you're gonna be running around with tires look like you just went down dirt road. But my Coopers, I don't have that problem. And they're roughly about half the cost of what a BFG is. So again, if you wanna keep, you know, keep the money down on it, you know, and budget wise, Cooper's a great way to go. I know you can get cheaper routes, but I just like, I like the white letter tires on a car of this era or just hot rods or muscle cars in general. White letters aren't always for everybody, but all my cars have them. So yeah, now moving on to, so we're still at our base model, but now we have a running and driving car. That's perfectly fine for some people. I like to take stuff a little bit further. So what I did, these are, these stripes are Phoenix Graphic 7677 Dodge Aspen RT stripes. So, I think they were about 220 shipped and you can either, they come with a set that is, the stripes for a rear spoiler car are different in the rear section after the door because they, the non-spoiler cars, they go down the quarter and then they swoop up the trunk and meet on the trunk. Whereas the spoiler cars end at the rear spoiler. But they come with both, both parts of the kit from that in that asking price. They don't offer two different kits. So, um, moving on, that's just something I chose to do. You get the RT call outs and you know, the stripes. So not something you have to do, it just spices up the car. So, um, the 1980 RTs just had a single pin stripe with an RT call out. It wasn't quite for me. I always liked these year stripes. So that's what I gave them. It's your choice. You know, again, at the end of the day, what's great about these cars is you can put 76 through 80 stripes all in the same car. So kind of works out and it's cool. So moving on. So they offered a super pack package on top of the basic RT, which included the front chin spoiler, the fender flares, and the rear spoiler and the side louvers. That was part of the super pack package and I think it really just transforms the car in my opinion. Um, there is some aftermarket companies that are making the, the front chin spoiler, the fender flares, <coughs> excuse me, and the rear spoilers at this time. Um, there's a guy down in Mexico, I cannot think of the absolute name, I will put it in the description for the video um, I'm told he makes a really good product it's all fiberglass and it's actually fairly cheap I think you can get the the front spoiler the fender flares and the rear spoiler for like $450 so that's a, in my opinion a really good investment to change the whole entire way the car looks and yeah I, I'll have uh, yeah I'll show you a picture of how this thing looked before we put that on Yeah, you can order order those. Um, my front chin spoiler is the eBay one, which the, somebody went forward and took the time. That one's made out of ABS, so it really t twists and conforms a lot more. It's really lightweight, but it's actually a Mopar direct replacement part that went through the licensing to be able to have that. That chin spoiler was, I think, about two hundred dollars right now, plus shipping, but it uses all factory holes, you don't have to modify anything, it's got powder coated brackets for the radiator support, and it's a really nice fitment. So, um, the fender flares I have on this one right now are swap meeting ones, they're made by a company from, called MAS, they're not in business anymore, but I got, I think I paid like a hundred bucks for those, they don't fit the greatest, but it's fiberglass over what the original ABS was. These cars aren't perfect, the dies weren't always the greatest, but it gives you the effect. So. And then my side louvers and rear spoiler were junkyard pieces off original cars. Um, I have, I don't know, 200 bucks into those. So 
But yeah, that is what built this car. I did other little things like I put a 68, 69, or maybe, maybe 72, or not 72, but 70 also, um, charger flip top gas cap on it. Um, there's a there's a guy that makes the adapter mount so you can mount one of those. Um, this car had a locking gas cap and somebody went at it with a screwdriver and messed the filler neck up up so you couldn't get a twist uh, locking gas cap like they had originally. So that nobody makes an aftermarket filler neck. So that was my solution to get over that hurdle because there's always hurdles in every build. So, um, but yeah. If you go the, that same route, you know, you not have a Super Pack RT clone or Roadrunner clone or whatever you're going after. Um, another thing I did was the base models usually only have one single chrome mirror. And I went and put the dual sport chrome or dual sport mirrors and then I painted them, painted them to match the car. Not something you have to do, it's just something I did at like two mirrors. So, um... You do have to drill a hole for the pasture door. So, and then moving on to the inside, I didn't really care for the bench seat because I wanted a floor shifter. I think that's just more hot rodish in my opinion. So what I did was uh, I have a buddy that parts out these cars in Ohio. He had this set of um, Highland plaid, is what they call it, um, high back bucket seats that came out of a '79 Duster. So I think I, I think I traded them for that, but you can find a set of high backs in okay shape for like 250 bucks for these cars, maybe. Now well, with prices going up, maybe maybe 350. Depends on what swap me you're at and who you deal with. So, and then I found the matching back seat from my friend in Massachusetts. He's another, he's a hoarder. Teddy is a hoarder. This is what you'd call him. So, but, so I got that, you know. Now you have bench seats in the center console I had. So, and I mounted a used B&M floor shifter inside the a factory center console. And then I put a, a five inch tack on it and gave it some, you know, gauges for voltmeter or volts, amps, whatever you want to call it, and temperature and whatnot. But yeah, I'm rambling. So let's, at the end of the day, how much do I have into this car? Le between the motor, transmission, rear end, given I did get some good deals on parts. But when you break it down at the end of the day, you know, not talking the additional cost of the car. This car will runs a high 14. I could get more out of it. But again, it's still got RV heads. I did put a huge whiplash cam in it, but it's just a, a bare bone stock build pretty much. But it runs high 14, so that's plenty for what this car is. It gets, I put an ABS2 Edelbrock on it, and it gets about 15, 16 miles a gallon with your foot out of it. So, but yeah, overall cost at the end of the day is under $3,000. So depending on what your initial what you find the car for, what you buy the car for, you can have a, when you're all said and done, this car, depending on, you know, what your initial asking price is, say you spent 3000 you have $6,000 into a turnkey car, ready to go. So, that, that's just to give you guys an idea how cheap these cars can be built. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of factors and everything, but that's how cheap I built this car. I put 40,000 miles on it since I built it four years ago. And I've had a lot of fun with it. So, yeah. That is how cheap you can build a Aspen and Volari at this moment in time. I'm sure the next five, 10 years costs are gonna go up on everything because the collector car market is keeps climbing and climbing and climbing. But right now, this is what you can build a car for and the you know you can have I like I like these because you can take them to any car cruise or car show and you're pretty much guaranteed to have the only Aspen or Volari there because there's just not that many of them left there's not there's the older generation looks down on them 
because of the, they were when they released they were known for being or having rust issues. And Rusty. And they're still known for having rust issues, but that's why I said it's it's very important if you're getting into it, try and find a solid one unless you're willing to do the work because starting out with that solid project base, you're not getting into the you're going to get over your head a little bit, is my opinion. I see it happen a lot, especially in this body style. Some people buy a RT version with a 360 and everything, but it's got rounded up frame rails. And that just, it's constantly, you know, in the back of their mind, bothering them that they have to fix this before they can get any further or do anything more to the car because it's not structurally sound or structurally safe. You know, that's why I think try, try and find one with solid floors and solid frame rails. When you go to look at one of these cars, what I always do, first thing when I look at them is lay right by, you know, the front tire, reach under there and just grab that frame rail and just, if it crumbles in your hand or I've had them before I reach under there and they're not, there's no frame rail left there at all. That is either, you have to make a decision at that point if you want to get into putting frame rails in the car or if you just need to walk away and try and find another one. So, luckily with this car, it was a former grandma car, so it was rock solid underneath. I mean, absolutely beautiful. It was, I don't know, one, it's the best car that I've ever bought because it, I had to do no metal work to it. This is the original paint, and right now it is horribly, horribly dirty because it's been put away for six months, but when it's out and it's clean, it shines really good. Um, but yeah, it's... That is just how cheap you can build one of these. So hopefully you guys enjoyed my little spiel and hopefully you might take something away from it if you're looking at getting one of these and you know, they're cool. I like them and they're still affordable. They're, the A bodies right now are kind of getting priced out of the everyday Joe range and that's where everybody's been going for the past 20 years and well, even, even 30 years. and. These weigh, weigh only a couple hundred pounds more than a A body, so if you're looking at the drag racing aspect of it, there's not that much numbers difference wise. So, but I'm gonna go and get back to work, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I know it's warmer here, so hopefully it's warmer where you guys are at, and I'm gonna get back to work, and I will see you guys on the next video. I think we're gonna get into tearing our 360 apart for our. Plymouth Valari Richard Petty edition and see what else we can cook up this week because the weather is supposed to be absolutely gorgeous and I cannot wait to get out of the garage and go back to wrenching outside. That's one of the main things I enjoy. I, I built this whole car in a month or a month and a half in my driveway and call me crazy but I like being out in the fresh air. So you guys have a good weekend and I'll catch you guys on the next build and if you haven't already hit that notification bell and please like and subscribe and hopefully you guys like this content I'm gonna get, get you lots more of it and I want to get these cars out there and get them known a little bit more so people aren't so afraid to invest in them I guess is what you would call it so uh, I will catch you guys on the next one and remember they don't move until you do and that's what you can take away from it <laughs>